We start off talking about infants. An North American infant usually weighs about 7 pounds, 3.2 kilograms at birth, uh, doubles its birth weight by 3 to 4 months of age, and triples it by the end of its first year. Uh, an infant is usually about 19 to 20 inches long, 48 to 51 centimeters at birth, and reaching about 29 to 30 inches, 74 to 76 centimeters at 12 months. Infants will usually sleep 16 to 18 hours per day, with sleep and wakefulness uh, evenly distributed over a 24-hour period. Sleep requirements gradually decrease to 14 to 16 hours per day, with uh, 9 to 10 hours of sleep time occurring at night. Most infants sleep through the night at 2 to 4 months. Uh, an infant is usually easily aroused uh, during sleep. Um, you know, this is the normal child. This is really important to remember because there are some disorders, uh, particularly colic, where um, children may not sleep much at all. Um, you know, they may be up, they may sleep a lot, but it may be for short periods of time. So, as I said, for these classes and the, and these milestones that we're going to go over, this is all for the average normal child or normal subject. Um, physiological changes. Um, the head and trunk of an infant are, and young child is large in proportion to the rest of the body. Um, their heads are much larger than uh, an adult's head is uh, proportionally. and makes them a little top heavy. The chest uh, circumference of an infant's head is usually less than the, or I'm sorry, the, the chest circumference of an infant's head is usually less than the head circumference. By about 9 to 10 months, the circumference of the head and chest are about the same. After one year of age, the chest circumference is larger. Uh, growth of the hips, legs, and feet catches up in later childhood. Some other things to note, um, is particularly with uh, infants and small children, is um, their tongues are much larger proportionally to to adults, and their airway as well is um, much narrower proportionally to adults. <coughs> um, the head, um, at birth, the head of many newborns is misshapen um, because of the, mol the molding of the head that occurs during vaginal deliveries. Uh, molding is possible because of small diamond-shaped openings called fontanelles. Uh, we often hear people refer to them as soft spots that are present on both the top and back of the head. Fontanelles are gaps in the bone of the head of an infant, uh, which allows flexibility during, in, during delivery and growth of the brain. It allows the head to grow out. Uh, these areas are not completely will not completely close until about six months of age in the rear fontanelle and about 18 months in the top. <coughs> Excuse me. Newborns possess a number of very interesting reflexes, uh, which are involuntary responses to stimulus. Touching a baby's cheek stimulates a feeding reflex called a rooting reflex and causes the baby to turn its mouth towards the side that was touched and start to suck. Uh, this reflex usually disappears after about four months. The sucking reflex, another feeding reflex, causes a newborn to suck, such as um, nipples, fingers, toes, when its lips are touched. This reflex is present throughout infancy. And if the newborn's hearing is intact, he will react with a startle to a loud noise. Um, this is called the Morrow reflex. In contrast to the rhythmic soothing sounds of lullaby or heartbeat, um, these will end up putting infants to sleep. Um, oftentimes, that people may utilize things such as white noise, which might be um, static on the television, vacuums, or uh, a lot of people use uh, driving around in a vehicle. The Palmer grasp reflex, which disappears after three months, occurs when a small object is placed against the palm of the hand, causing the fingers to curl around it. At birth, uh, the most developed of the senses is hearing, and the least developed is sight. Uh, within days, an infant will recognize the sound of his mother's voice and turn toward it. 
newborns are able to smell and s smell and quickly quickly recognize some things. Um, the smell and handling of their caregiver particularly. They are also sensitive to pain and extremes of temperature. Most newborns respond positively when touched, held, or cuddled. An infant's response to pain is similar to that of an older child. <clears throat> um, this is a really important thing to remember, particularly when you are dealing with these patients, is um, what, I guess what I'm trying to say is, what are these things that help calm a patient down? And that's going to be the, um, you know, having the caretaker, particularly mother, um, mother, usually father sometimes, you know, touch them, hold them, cuddle them. Um, if you ever get to the point where, you know, you need to, for whatever reason, you need to immobilize some a uh, child or you need to put oxygen on them, you know, have the mother reach their hand out. I can remember one scene particularly where I ended up having to immobilize a child on one seat, on the bench seat, and the mother on the stretcher. And I made sure to leave the mother's arm loose so that she can hold her child, um, she can hold and just gently rub on her child. And that really made a huge, huge difference. Heart rates, um, between 100 and 960 beats per minute during the first 30 minutes of life. Uh, this slows to about 120 per minute. Um, heart rate is usually between 80 and 140 beats per minute during the first year. <coughs> Respiratory rates, uh, usually between 40 and 60 breaths per minute drops to about 40, 30 to 40 breaths per minute after a few months of life and slowing. Oh, hold on one second, please. Sorry about that. Uh, respiratory rates are usually, as I said, between 40 and 60 breaths per minute in infants. And they dropped about 30 to 40 breaths per minute after the first few minutes of life and slowing to 20 to 30 breaths per minute by one year. These are extremely important things to characteristics to remember because this helps us evaluate what normal versus abnormal breathing is. That way we can rectify as needed. So I'm going to pull this mic back up there. Um, respiratory anatomy, in general, all structures are smaller, more easily blocked than in adults. Um, let's see. The nasal passages are soft and narrow. Uh, they have little supporting cartilage. As I said, the, the tongue really is a huge aspect of that airway. It's, it's much larger proportionally, which makes it even easier to obstruct, particularly because the trachea is um, so much smaller than an adult. That's this slide here. The tongue takes up proportionally more space um, in the mouth than a child of a child than an, in an adult. The tracheal rings are softer and more flexible in infants and children. This puts the airway at a risk for compression of the neck if it's not uh, positioned properly. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say here with that, if you you um, do your head tilt chin lift. If you extend it too far, it's called hyperextension. If you hyperextend it, you'll actually cause a kink in the trachea and you won't allow air in. Um, just imagine bending a straw back. What happens when you bend that straw back, uh, it pinches off at, at a certain point and it, com it becomes completely obstructed. Chest wall of an infant and young child is softer and more elastic than <clears throat> that of an ad older child or adult. Uh, this is because it's made of more cartilage than bone. Um, cartilage eventually turns into bone, but at this point, the bone is growing and forming. 